So I've had a request to provide a bit more information on how to do Python scripting um, with um, device simulations, so how, how to drive your device simulations with Python script. Um, so I thought I'd make a res uh, sort of response to this email that I got and explain it in a bit more detail. Um, now, if you want to, for example, systematically change a material parameter, the easiest way to do this, so for example, if you want to plot a graph of mobility against um, fill factor, the easiest way to do this is with the parameter scan. But if you want a bit more control, which you often do, um, the second best, or the, the, the more powerful way to do this is with a script editor. Um, so I'm just going to bring this up here. And this is the script editor, and this is what it looked like. And what it is effectively is it's a a way that you can drive GPVDM with Python. So the whole of this interface is actually written in Python. So you're sort of tapping into the API behind here and then driving, um, driving it with sort of basic commands. Um, the script looks quite daunting. It's not. Um, it's only long because I've added all these comments to try and explain to people what, what, what this is actually doing. And you know, it could have made it a bit more simple, but I wanted to cover all, all the use cases here. So I think the best thing to do is just to run the script and see what it does. Um, so uh, let's just click run. And what it does is it, is it prints out a file, it spits out a file called out.txt. So if I just open up that file, I'm just going to do it on a, um, over here. Where is it? Here's, here's a file. And what this is, is this is a, um, it's just a text file with the, the, um, the thickness of the active layer uh, of, the, of the proskite layer versus um, power conversion efficiency and fill factor. So you've just got various thicknesses here and various um, power conversion efficiencies. This is just an example, this is not optimized at all, but it's just an example of how you, how you could vary one parameter and, um, and uh, look at the, uh, what comes out of the, the simulation. Um, <clears throat> so that's that. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be varying the thickness of a layer. So we're going to be varying the thickness of, of a perovskite layer. Um, and this is just, I th I'm not quite sure which layer it is actually. So I think it's, so it's going to be th this, this perovskite layer here we're going to be um, varying the thickness of. Um, so I think this one's actually very thin. So all these layers are very thin, but it, 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 it's far thinner than it should be, but it doesn't actually matter for this, uh, for this, for this example. Um, so, we're going to change the thickness of this layer, and if you notice in this window, we have three layers that are active, so actually take part in electrical simulation. So we have the P dot, the perovskite, and, and the zinc oxide. Um, now, if we look at the electrical mesh, so we've got, um, if we look at the electrical mesh, we see that the total thickness, so this is eight to the minus seven meters, we see the total thickness of this electrical mesh is equal to the sum of these layers, so that's two plus four plus two is eight, so we've got eight here. So when we change this, so when we, for example, change this to be, um, say, eight to the, to the seven, so that's adding, a, adding four to it, um, this needs to be updated, you see it's actually updated here automatically um, to be a bit thicker. Now, um, when you're scripting, you need to take care of that yourself, it won't automatically do this, you just need to make sure that the layer thickness is equal to or the total mesh thickness. So. Right, let's have a go um, at looking at the script. So before we get into the script, um, we first need to understand a bit about how these how GPVM stores simulation data. So if you click uh, File and New, you get all these different simulations that you can do. And these files are actually just zip files. You know, they're, they're not, um, there's nothing special about these files. They're literally just zip files. So when you click Create a New Simulation, you get um, something that looks like this. You get a sim.gpvdm, but this is actually just a zip file. If you rename it, um, if we go rename .zip, you can actually look at what's inside it. Um, and this is what's inside it. And you've got something called a json.imp. Now, json is a format of, st of storing information um, that's used a lot on the web. And if we open uh, that file, so I'm just going to open it. Uh, yeah, let's open this one. Where's it gone? Yeah, so here's, here's what a typical JSON uh, file looks like. It's basically um, a load of sort of text and brackets and things like that. Now, this looks quite scary if you look at it in a text editor. But if you go ahead and open this in Firefox or any other browser, the data looks a lot more ordered and it looks like this. So this is actually what's inside um, this, this JSON.imp file. 
So what we can see is like every every part of the the, the um, every part of the simulation is um, uh, defined in this file. So for example, um, if we want to go look at the JV curve, we go JV curve. Um, <clears throat> we look at segment zero because the JV curve split the simulation. You have multiple different types of simulation for JV curve. We're just going to look at the first one. And in config, and you've got uh, the start voltage, the stop voltage, and the voltage step. So you can, by changing these values, you could change how, how the JV curve performs. Or alternatively, if you look in epitaxy, which is where the structure of the device is kept, it's got various layers. So it's got layer 0 to 4, which correspond to this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we looked in layer 0, 1, 2, so let's look in that layer 2, um, this, is the layer, this is the data that represents that layer. And for example, if you go into the density of states, um, we get all the electrical parameters in there that would be associated with that layer. So these would be accessible through the interface through, um, th through here. So if we look, I don't know, the re relative permittivity is 20. So let's look down here what we've got, uh, 20. So in epsilon r. So you can, by editing this JSON file, you can basically change and drive the simulation however you want. And it's quite an efficient way to, to store this type of data. Right, so um, without further ado, let's look at the actual script itself. Um, so how does this work? So firstly, um, the, this interface here calls a G4DM plugin. Okay. And let's go by, through this line by line. And it hands the API, so it basically hands a, a pointer to what this to effectively all of this whole window and everything in it to this function um, with a variable called API. So we're going to save this. We're going to save this as API.API. Um, then we're going to make a new directory called scan. So we've already done this because I've already just run this script. So if we get that window up, so if we get, let me just get the window up. <clears throat> this, is, this is that window that uh, this is the, this is the, the directory that we, we, we're going to make, we've already made. So let's keep that on top. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to load in... Um, what are we going to do? Yes. So firstly, we're going to load in uh, the JSON file in the current simulation directory. So we're going to API JSON load. So that will load in this file here. And API.getSimPath basically is the simulation path that we're currently running in. So I don't know what this is. I don't know where we're running it. We're running it in, whoops, uh, second disk gpdm.gpdm 8.0. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then we say data.server. So data is basically where the, um, the, the, the JSON data has been let, uh, read into. So by calling this load command, we've effectively loaded in all of this into a Python class. Um, now we can look at this, we can inspect this Python class using the Data Explorer. Um, so we click on the Data Explorer. This is effectively this uh, JSON file, simulation file, converted into a Python class. So for example, we can go, uh, let's, look at, let's look at what we're doing here. We're going data.server, so where's server? Of course it's not in alphabetical order, is it? Server, um, dot max GPDM instances, max GPDM instances, and it's got the value of zero currently. So we're going to be setting that to false, which means use all the CPUs. Then we're just going to save that file. And we've just saved it. So we just saved, basically dumped this Python class um, to this file so we've updated it. OK. Now we're going to set the layer thickness to 10 um, nanometers. That's ridiculously thin, but it doesn't matter for this example. Um, we're then going to um, make the a directory in which we're going to run this, this series of simulations. So I'm going to sim, say simpath equals, get the current directory name, and then and then st, and string um, make of the, the layer thickness. So if we've got a layer thickness of 10, it's going to make a folder called um, scan forward slash 10, effectively. And then we're going to call api.makedir, which, which will make that directory. And then we're going to call api.clone. And what this will do is clone the current simulation directory into um, this directory 10. We're then going to load in um, the JSON file in this directory 10. So we, we're going to lo load what the, the, the JSON files in this sim.gpdm file. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the simulation mode. So we're going to, we're going to let's look at, look at the data explorer. 
There we go, there's Data Explorer. We're going to go sim, uh, dot sim mode. I'm going to make sure it's at segment zero dot JV. Now, um, you might be like, that's a bit confusing, but <clears throat> the way it works is basically uh, you've got various simulation modes here. So we, so we say we've got Sun's VOC. So if we click on, uh, no, in fact, let's look at, uh, we've got some time domain. Yeah, we've got, we've got some frequency domain. So let's look at the frequency domain. So there's frequency domain. Um, so let's look at this. So we've got, in this frequency domain simulation, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 um, simulations. Um, if 0 is a number. So if we go and look at the JSON file here, um, and we go to frequency domain, so FX domain, we've got one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And each one of these segments corresponds to one of these things. So if, for example, I select, um, so let's select the third one, which is impedance spectroscopy. So zero one, sorry, the second, zero, one, two, so that's impedance spectroscopy. So let's select that here, impedance spectroscopy. Um, and then I look in the Data Explorer. In the sim, in the sim, sim mode, is going to be segment two at FX domain. So what this means is, it's going to run effectively segment two and it's going to run it with the frequency domain module so for example if i wanted to run if i wanted to, if i set it to um is fit which is something different um and then go look at, look at this in the data explorer the simulation mode will be segment four fx domain um, and so for the jv curve we could want to do a jv curve we click on jv curve go data explorer and it, and it says basically it's value because segment zero at JV. So we're running uh, with JV. With JV. We're going to run segment zero with the JV, with the JV um, module. Excellent. Okay, so we've sort of forced this to be that, that case. Now, it could be, just get this out, it could be that um, it's already set and you've already configured it by just clicking like that, but I wasn't sure. Um, if that was the case, so I just thought it to be true. Now, um, I'm now going to look at uh, this. So we've got data.epi. So epi stands for epitaxy. So it's just a short way of writing epitaxy. So that means like a layered structure. And we're going to use the function find shape by name. So if we look in the epitaxy, so all the, st all the shapes of the model are defined in epitaxy. You click on epitaxy, you've got these layers that we've talked about before. You've also got contacts, but we'll, we'll talk about that um, in a minute. But basically, all these things, um, whether they're, they're, they're contacts or layers or whatever, they're all, they're all this object that's called a shape. So if we go uh, layer 2, which is the perovskite layer, this thing here um, is effectively, effectively a shape. It's like a, a shape that defines... Um, that layer. So it's got, for example, a, a dx size, a dy size, DZ, a dz size. Um, it's got um, electrical parameters. It's got colors. It's got you know all these it's optical materials, photoluminescence data. All these things. Um, it's got interface values. You know all, all these things define the, what this what this shape is. Now it's got a name, and its name is shape name is perovskite. Okay. So what we're doing with this is we're finding, but effectively the the the, the in, in the in the Python sort of structure, we're finding the object that represents um, the perovskite. So if we look at this in the in, in the data explorer, um, what it will what this function will have done is it will have gone into epitaxy and it will have basically searched this for something with with a name perovskite. So um, and it will have found this one because the shape name. Is perovskite, and it will return us a handle to this to this object. So we're doing this for the p dot, the perovskite, and the zno, um, and then we're going to set the layer thickness. So we're going to shape one. So that's shape one dot. Uh, let's look at it in the Firefox uh, dot dy. So that's that's the vertical size of it. We're going to set to the layer thickness, um, and then what we're going to do. So that's that's set the thickness. What we're then going to do is we're going to going to go data dot mesh dot mesh y dot segment zero. So this is um, effectively, so I'll just expand it here, mesh, mesh y, so this is the, the y mesh. The segment zero is the, um, is, if, there, if there were two mesh segments, we'd have 
you have multiple sort of, you can sort of mash up in multiple bits. Um, but uh, we, we're not we're not box giving. We're not going to bother to do that here. So we've got segment zero, and the length is eight to minus seven. So what we need to do is we just set this length here equal to the total length of the active layer. So effectively, we're just we're just doing what we did before uh, manually. So this this is the total length of the active layer. So it's um, one point two to minus six, and um, the layer editor here. This is um, so basically all these this this thickness of everything that's going to be simulated electrically has to equal the length of the electrical mesh. So we're going to do that by going. Uh, so the length so s zero dot y is the <coughs> dot dy is the length of the proskite. Oh sorry, the p dot pss. Um, s two dot dy is this one is the length of the zmo, and <coughs> because we're counting the layer thickness that we're actually counting up in is I've done it in nanometers. Oh, sorry, I've done it in nanometers rather than meters. So we're going to count 10, 30, um, 50, whatever. Um, and that's just so that we can save it in a nice file mode <coughs> without any e to the minus nine on it. So to calculate the actual length from that, we just need to multiply by nanometers to get the thickness. So that's the total thickness of the mesh. I'll just save it there. So that's going to set that thickness there. Then we just go data.save, which saves the Python class as and, and spits out this, this JSON object. So effectively, it's going to write everything we've edited in Python straight to the JSON file. Then what we're going to do is add a job. So we're going to api.addJob. So this is what this will do is add a, a job to or tell tell the tell G3DM there that it's got a job to execute and that's the path that needs to execute it on. Then we're going to add 20 to the layer thickness and go around here again and set up you know, a few more simulations. Okay, so then um, that's it. And the final thing we call is api.run. <coughs> now you could just leave it there and it would run the simulations for you. Um, but it wouldn't pluck out and organize your data for you. So we go api.run, that, that will run it. Um, and then we go self, so callback equals self.finish. So when it's finished all those simulations and run them, um, it will then call finished. So finished is a function that basically goes and into, so where's the directory structure? Where's the directory structure gone? Uh, ten. Here we go. So finished is effectively a function that goes through this directory structure we've created with all these simulations and fetches out the parameters we're interested in. Um, so we call simulations equals API dot find simulations. Um, so what that's going to do is going to search through this directory structure looking for any found simulations. They're iterative. So if you've got sort of these things buried at multiple depths, it'll also find them. Then for each of these uh, simulations it's found, so this, this is a path. We're going to load in the JSON file. So, for example, if we're in 50, it's going to load in. Uh, where's the JSON file? Open with archive. It's going to lo load in this JSON. Dot, oh, sorry, it's, it's taken it out of here. Where are we? JSON. So, JSON.imp there um, is going to read that one in because we've just told to uh, API JSON.load that file. Then again, we're going to find the shape. Called perovskite, so data.epi.find shape by name perovskite. Um, so that's now going to find that layer. And the reason we're doing this is we want to know its thickness um, because we want to plot a graph. So basically, that's the object that is the perovskite layer. So we can access the thickness here. So shape 0.dy, that's perovskite layer. Then the final thing we need to find is the values of uh, power conversion efficiency and fill factor. So what we can do is um, we can go sim info. So where's the sim info? Oh. So here's the sim info file. This contains all the information about this simulation. So here we've got effectively, and this is in every simulation file. Here effectively we've got um, fill factor, PCE, power conversion efficiency, VOC, all these all these things here that you might want to know. Um, so open, what we're going to do is, and that's that again, we'll just open that up again. This again, note, is a JSON file with this typical brackets, and then this is this is JSON. So we're going to use the Python um, API to load in the sim.info file. So we're going to open this file as text. We're going to use the JSON module uh, there to read this in. We're going to pull out of this JSON structure the PC and fill factor, and then we're going to print out to, or we're going to spit out to an array, um, 
so the thickness of the perovskite layer, the PCE and the fill factor, and then finally we're going to write this uh, this uh, list this list of uh, text to disk with this um, open write and close command, and then that's it. So um, it's a bit of a complex example because there's quite a lot to do, but basically you can build on this and do what you want with it. Um, and so, for example, if you wanted to scan you know, a, a different layer, you could, I don't know, change perovskite out for something else. The only thing you need to make sure is effectively that this thickness here um, adds up to the total active layer thickness. Um, and I think that's it really. So you can sort of play with this as you want. Um, the source codes um, for this API, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go and find that. So hang on. Just going to find that. Yeah. So in um, in the in the Windows version that I dis that distribute, all this um, source code is actually it's in the modules directory. So you can have a look at um, at that. And in there, there is something called GPVDM API. And this GPVDM API, if I put it with Puma is effectively API you're accessing. So when you go, um, you know, API dot, you're actually accessing uh, this, this, uh, this, this, this class here. So here you've got your, let's look for clone. So there's the clone thing that cop copies the simulation and uh, what else do we have run? So, oh. so there's the run command there. Um, so this is, you know, that, that was called from here. So I think that's it. The only other th thing I would point out is that if you want to go in that direction, you can actually use, rather than going through this API module, you can actually use um, the source code directly. Um, and if you if you want to convert, I'll just say this at the end, if you want to convert the JSON file into a Python class, use, um, I think it's called GPDM, uh, just move this. It's, I think it's called GPDM JSON. Yeah. So this um, this is effectively the base class of everything in GPDM JSON. And if you if you use this GPDM data, you can go. You can just go effectively GPDM data dot load. And then you can you can manipulate this. You don't need to use this actual uh, script interface. You can use whatever Python GUI you want. But that's a bit more sophisticated. So that's a bit really. I think I've covered main things I want to cover. Um, if you've got questions, pop them in the comments below or write me on Twitter. Um, if you've not joined the Facebook group already, um, join join it because I think it's quite a good way to ask questions because other people can see the answers. Um, you can follow me on on Twitter. I, always put information on there when I release um, sort of updates and things like that. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video um, and uh, yeah, thanks very much.